Welcome back to Gray's Land. Today we are rehabbing uh, this front yard, making it beautiful. Uh, the previous homeowner, they had a lot of random thoughts. You see that pipe there? That was a sidewalk to a bunch of parking spaces. And in the wintertime, that's a massive tripping hazard. In case you don't know, that pipe is actually the well. And so this sidewalk is going to get ripped out. Also, mowing the whole yard, I don't want to do that with a push mower. And this is nearly impossible with a riding mower the way it currently is. So all these rotted grow boxes, I'm taking them out. Yes, I probably could have used them, but if you saw the condition of the rest of the house, you wouldn't trust the previous owners to uh, not to have put something inside those that's not safe for food. Um, so they're all getting removed. They're rotted out anyway, so even if I were to save them, I would need to replace the wood. So we're just going to make this a giant yard that um, will connect to the backyard, so all be fenced in. And that way, uh, when the chickens come, they can uh, meander through the front or the backyard to give them the maximum grazing uh, pasture as possible. And so we're going to rip the rocks out. They had a little bit of worn out like uh, fabric underneath it to prevent the grass from growing in. Uh, ripped all that out as well. So today we're going to rip out the fencing and that little entryway. Uh, by the well and eventually the sidewalk in a future video will get ripped out. And I'm going to put the fencing in a way that it won't interfere with the sidewalk coming to the house. So that way I don't have to worry about uh, if the mailman comes or something. I don't have to worry about the chickens getting out or the dog getting out. So I will make the fence go up to the sidewalk, but not past the sidewalk. Also, take a note of that driveway, how worn out the grass is and uncompacted the dirt is. We're going to have to fix that at some point, too. But these fence posts, they're not uh, set in concrete. They're just uh, pounded in. So I'll show you in a little bit how we ripped those out. And you see how easy this wood came out. It, it was pretty well rotted. That garage door will have to get replaced in a future video too. Some of those grow boxes have uh, a couple random flowers in them that are annuals. So anytime I see one, I will try to save it and move it to the flower box that's up against the side of the house. This was a little uh, entryway with a chain and they had it soaked into the ground, but I was able to put the soil back. So in order to pull these posts out, you just wrap another post, preferably as long as you can find, around it uh, with any uh, old rope or this was a bent up winch, so I didn't use that, or tie down strap, sorry. And you just uh, wrap it around a few times like that, get it good and tight, and then uh, leverage says I, bam, comes right out, doesn't take much effort. Around this time I was experimenting with another project in the backyard with an auger and this area is super rocky and it, the auger actually hit a rock and it, it jerked the auger really bad and it actually broke my hand. Um, so this strategy is actually so good that you can pull a post out of the ground basically with one hand. It might be a different story if it's concreted into the ground now. So the previous owner, they used this portion for additional parking because apparently 10,000 people lived here or something. But we're going to give this land back to the earth and let it heal. And all this old fencing that I'm taking out of the ground, I'm going to be giving it to a friend so it will be recycled. But this is not the type of fencing I'm going to be using uh, for the house. You can see in the background there the gate that's 
kind of bent open. It's very sensey. So once the front row is completely gated in, I'm actually going to remove that entire fence back there, including the gate. Uh, so then that way the front yard and backyard is all one yard. And the fence I'm going to go for, well, that's a surprise. So if you want to see what that is, you're going to have to subscribe and ring the bell. So when I do uh, film and edit the uh, video on putting the fence together, you can watch it and judge me and see how I did. So then we're taking the soil from those raised beds and we're filling in the holes so you don't break an ankle walking in the yard and to help the healing process and so you don't hit it, your tire on it with the riding mower. And a couple of these rocks, I'm going to not see them and I'll eventually hit them with the riding mower in the future and have to resharpen the mower's blade. Unfortunately, the tree right next to the house on the left there, uh, most of it is dead. Uh, this is fall when this is filmed, and uh, so it lasts a lot of leaves, but two thirds of it is actually dead. So it's a major hazard to the house and the vehicle. So unfortunately, as much as I love neighborhoods with mature grown trees, that tree is going to have to come down. And you can see at this point, I am pulling these posts out of the ground with one hand because the auger broke the other hand. I've learned living now in Montana for a few years that people in Montana are not more outdoorsy than people in Arizona. They simply only have half the year that they're allowed to be outside because the other half of the year it's so cold. So there's that. See, one hand. This is really rocky soil. So if you have good soil or bad soil, as long as it's not concrete in, you can do this with one person. This is the end of what I filmed for this video. Uh, I stopped filming the rest of it, but the rest of the fence posts I went ahead and took out. But with the one hand, I stopped filming. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again.